Hello and welcome to another Algebra 1 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we'll be doing Unit 2, Lesson 1 on Equations and Their Solutions. This is our first lesson in Unit 2 and Unit 2 is going to be devoted entirely to solving equations um, and solving inequalities. And it is exceptionally important before we get into the techniques and the methods and bog down and all of that, that you are very comfortable with two things. One, what is an equation? And two, what does it mean to have a solution to an equation? All right, forget about how to find the solutions or anything like that. We just want to make sure we understand those two issues today. So let's get right into it by first discussing what an equation is. And it's really simple enough. The definition of an equation, right? An equation is a statement about the equality of two expressions. In other words, it's anything anything that takes the form expression number one equals expression number two. All right, it's just a statement. So, simple enough, you could even see problems like this on a standardized test, exercise number one. Which of the following is not an equation? Explain. All right, well, I mean, which of those four choices doesn't fit this pattern, expression one equals expression two. It's pretty easy, but pause the video now for a moment and think about it. All right, well, it's simple, right? Each one of these four choices makes some statement about equality, except for choice three, right? Choice three is just simply an expression. That's all it is. Oh, two times four X plus one. That's not equal to anything. Right? It, ju it just isn't. Now, you might have been thrown off by something like choice four, one plus three equals six, and you might have said, well, that's not an equation because it's not true. But we didn't say anything about whether the equation was true or not. An equation is just a statement, true or false, or possibly, I don't know whether it's true or false, about the equality of two things. So, this, right, is not an equation, and I guess it really boils down to there's no equal sign. Basically, that's it. All right, now let's move on from that. Now, we talk about what's called the truth value of an equation. Now, an equation can be true, like two plus three equals five. An equation can be false, like one plus three equals five. Or an equation could be what we call open, which means that you know we can't determine whether the equality is true or not, all right? That's all. So let's take a look at exercise number two and think about this true, false, open nature of equations. Exercise number two. Consider the equation two times x minus eight equals 10 minus x. Letter A asks us, why can't you determine whether this equation is true or false? Well, what do you think? Pause the video now and write down a reason why you think that we can't determine whether this equation is true or false. Well, it's simple. Nobody gave us a value of x. Now, I'm not saying nobody gave us the correct value of x or the solution to the equation or anything like that. I'm just saying we don't have a value of x. So, no value of x is given. So in other words, this equation is that thing called open, right? Now we're not going to be too worried about whether or not you know what an open equation is or not. What's a lot more, more important is something like letter B. If x equals 5, will the equation be true? How can you tell? All right, well, pause the video. Let's say I just told you, hey, x is equal to 5. All right, is this equation true? Pause the video and see if you can figure that out. Well, really, what equations always are is an expression, right, on one side, we call the left side, and then an expression on the right side, right, where the dividing is the equal sign. 
All right, so those expressions only have values if we give you a particular value of x. So what we need to do is we need to figure out the value of the expression on the left when x is 5, the value of the expression on the right when x is 5, and then we just have to see whether those two values are equal. So let's take a look. All right, here we go. On the left-hand side, right, we have 2 times 5 minus 8. We have to be careful about our order of operations. And on the right-hand side, we have 10 minus 5. This is traditionally how we do these kind of checks. Then we have 10 minus 8 on the left-hand side and just 5 on the right-hand side. And of course, 10 minus 8 is 2. We get 2 equals 5, and that now is false. OK. So in other words, right, when x was 5, this equation has a false value. Like literally, the value of an equation can be true, false, or open, okay? And that's different than the value of a variable, which is just sort of a number. All right, let's take a look at letter C. Show that x equals 6 makes the equation true. Remember to think very carefully always about your order of operations. All right, well, why don't you go ahead and do exactly what we just did in letter B, substitute the value of, of x equals 6 into both sides of this expression, and hopefully you find that those two values are equal. All right, now whenever I do a substitution into an equation, I always like to have the original equation sitting there. Uh, so before I do that, let me just kind of pan back up here and write my equation down, 2x minus 8 is equal to 10 minus x. At this point, the equation is open, all right? But as soon as I put the value of x equals 6 in there, I can now determine whether the right side and the left side are equal. 2 times 6 is 12, right? Obviously, 10 minus 6 is equal to 4. So I get 4 equals 4, and that is true. All right, simple enough. And that is really important, simple enough, right? You need, using your arithmetic, you need to be able to determine at any point in time whether a particular value of the variable or variables, when we have equations with two variables or three variables in them, you need to be able to determine whether or not those va values make the equation true or false. Why is that? Well, let's take a look at the next piece, solutions to equations, right? So much of algebra boils down to solving an equation, right? Finding the value of x, there it is, right? We, we, we spend so much time learning techniques to solve equations that sometimes we lose the forest for the trees, right? A, the value for a variable is called a solution to an equation if it makes the equation true. End of story. Right? If a value of x, y, t, n, whatever, makes an equation true, then it's a solution. And if it makes the equation false, it is not a solution. End of story. So let's take a look at exercise number three and incorporate this new understanding. Determine whether each of the following values for the given variable is a solution to the given equation. Show the calculations that lead to your final conclusions. All right, so this is identical to really what we did in the last two parts of that previous problem, right? We want to know whether or not if we take a particular value of each one of these variables and we substitute them into the equation and we evaluate the left side and we evaluate the right side, will they be equal? Will the equation be true? If yes, then the value that was given is a solution. If no, if it's false, then the value given is not a solution. And we must understand that before we learn any techniques in terms of finding the solutions themselves. So let's do A and B, right? Um, let's take a look at letter A. We've got the very simple equation 2x plus 3 is equal to 17 when x is equal to 7. So is 7 a solution, right? Let's go through it. Let's do this one together. We're going to take our 7, we're going to put it into the equation. We're going to be very careful about our order of operations. 2 times 7 is 14. Of course, there's nothing wrong with using your calculator to do some of the arithmetic here, but again, as much as you can. Actually, I'm going to not have that check mark there. I'm going to put a big T for true, or maybe just I'll write the word true, and that means it is a solution. Yes, 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 yes. All right. 
Pause the video now and take a look at letter B to see whether or not t equals 10 is a solution to that equation. All right, well, let's do it. Of course, I left you the one that's going to have some negative numbers involved, but let's do it. So we're going to take 10. We're going to put it into our equation, 10 minus 20 divided by 5 equals negative 4. 10 minus 20 is negative 10 divided by 5 equals negative 4. Maybe I should be putting little question marks above this, right? You know, is it actually? I'm wondering that. Now, negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2 equals negative 4. That is false and therefore no. It is not a solution. So basically, it boils down to this for me, right? If you understand arithmetic, the basic rules of arithmetic, or if you're simply just good with your calculator in terms of like putting things in, at any point in this course, if you solve an equation, you know, you get value or values of x that quote, solve an equation, you should be able to tell whether or not those are the correct values by just doing this. Anyway, let's keep going, work a little bit more. This is going to give us a nice workout with things like order of operations and exponents and all sorts of things. All right, what I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to pause the video, do both letter C and letter D, and see if those values are solutions to the equations that are given. All right, really shouldn't matter how complicated the things are as long as we can do the arithmetic. So letter C, let's take a look. We're going to see if n equals 4 is a solution to this equation. Here we go. I'm going to put 4 in for n everywhere it occurs in the equation. It's just twice in this case, so we're going to get 2 times 9 is equal to 6 times 3. 2 times 9 is 18. 6 times 3 is 18. Maybe I'll put a little question mark there, and at this point, that's true, right? And that means, yes, it is a solution. But I'm going to keep emphasizing that whole true, so yes, right? Now let's take a look at letter D where we've got some exponents involved. See if you got that one right. Here we're going to have negative 1. We're going to check if that's our solution. So negative 1 squared minus 1 is equal to 2 times negative 1 plus 2. Now remember, negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. Right? Any number squared is actually a positive number, except for 0. Uh, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 1 minus 1 is 0. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. We didn't know until that point. That's true. So again, that means the answer is yes. It is a solution. All right. Now, of course, equations can get more complicated when they start to involve things like negative numbers or when they involve fractions. But ultimately speaking, we should still be able to determine whether a particular value is a solution. So yet again, I'd like you to pause the video now and take a shot at letter E and letter F, and then we'll come back and do them together. All right, let's do it. Letter E, we've got C equals 2. Is it a solution? So 3 times 2 plus 2 divided by 4 minus 1 is equal to 5. We have 3 times 4 then in the numerator, divided by 4, minus 1 is equal to 5. We've got 12 divided by 4, minus 1 is equal to 5. Extend my page a little bit, 3 minus 1 is equal to 5. Question, 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 2 is equal to 5. That is absolutely false, so that is not a solution. Right? Not a solution. Okay, and probably everyone's least favorite problem, right? A problem involving fractions. Maybe I'll do a little review of fraction work right now. Let's take a look. So, we've got x equals 8. We're going to substitute it into this left-hand expression. 3 fourths times 8 minus 1. Now I have negative 1 half times 8 plus 9. Now remember, any time you multiply by a fraction, that's really two things. You're dividing by the denominator, so 8 divided by 4 is 2. And then you're multiplying by the numerator, 3 times 2 is 6. Likewise here, right, 8 divided by 2 is 4. And then negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. Okay, 6 minus 1 is equal to 5. Negative 4 plus 9 is equal to 5. 
that is true. And that means yes, it is a solution. It is a solution to the problem, right? It's not part of the problem. All right, so, you know, again, what's the most important thing in all of this is the base idea which is that an equation, two base ideas, an equation is a statement about whether one expression is equal to another expression. Values of x that make those statements true are called solutions to the equation. All right, so let's take a look at one last problem. It is important, right, you know, for you to be able to think about sort of the work that's being done to solve an equation. And we'll get into equation solving techniques in the next, um, in the next lesson. But we will learn many equation solving techniques, many. So it's important to be able to check your work to make sure that the value that you find is a solution. It's maybe the most important thing of all of what we're doing today. So let's take a look at a little problem where someone, not saying who, you know, may or may not have made a mistake in his work. Let's take a look at exercise number four. Kirk was checking to see if x equals seven was a solution to the equation four x minus three equals 2x plus 11. He concluded that it was not a solution based on the work below. Was he correct? All right, so what I'd like you to do is take a look at Kirk's work, that rhymes, take a look at Kirk's work uh, and see whether or not he did it all correctly. And if not, right, wh what, was, what was incorrect, right? Pause the video now. I mean, it looks kind of good, right? Here, Kirk has taken x equals seven. He's put it in for this four. He's put it in for that two. So he has four times seven minus three equals two times seven plus 11, right? He then does seven minus three and he gets four and he does seven plus 11 and he gets 18, right? Then he does four times four gets 16, two times 18 gets 36 and says false. This is not a solution, right? But Kirk is wrong. Right? And the reason that Kirk is wrong is that at this point, right, at this point in the solution, he should not be doing the subtraction and the addition first. He should be doing the multiplication first, right? So Kirk is incorrect, right? And he's incorrect because quite frankly, at the end of the day, right, if you do it correctly, Right, you should be doing this multiplication first, getting 28 minus three, doing this multiplication first, getting 14 plus 11, doing this subtraction second, getting 25, doing this addition second and getting 25. That is true and therefore is a solution. So Kirk botched his order of operations. Very understandable. He hasn't been doing math for very long, right? So up here, it's very easy visually to think, oh, I'm going to do seven minus three, seven plus 11, right? But we have to be able to spot that mistake. We want to be able to look at other people's mathematical work and see whether they've done it correctly or incorrectly. I mean, that's half the job of a math teacher to begin with. All right. But you also want to try to be able to do it as a math student because it will make you even better. All right. Let's summarize this lesson. All right, this lesson was all about equations and their solutions. Understanding that an equation is simply a statement about the equality of two mathematical expressions. All right, that statement could be true, it could be false, or it could be just open. You know, and that's actually most of the time it's open because hey, hey, here's an equation, right? You don't know the value of x or n or t or whatever up front. It's your job to figure that out. Once you have figured out that value, then you can assess whether or not it's actually a solution to the equation by substituting it into both expressions and seeing if they're equal to each other. And if they are, it's a solution. Never forget that. That is the biggest picture of all when it comes to solving equations. We'll see that a lot more in coming lessons. For now, I just wanna thank you for joining me for another Algebra One lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and until I see you again, keep thinking and keep solving problems.